morning. I'm Jenna Clay and joining me today, we're talking about musicals, specifically the Into the Woods musical happening at Cedar Cliff High School. And joining me, I have two students who are cast members, Lillian Campbell and Alex McQuay. Thanks for being here this morning. Thank you for having us. Thank you. And also Mr. Matt Topping, Mr. Topping or Top, he's got many names. He is the choral director, but you're also directing this production. So good morning to you as well. Good morning, everyone. And why don't you guys start off, you know, just give us an overall view of what Into the Woods is about, because I've never seen it. I'm sorry, I admit that I've not seen it, but I'm excited to learn about it. So why don't you tell us what this is even about? Well, Alex, why don't you take, why don't you take <laughs> Alex, why don't you take the lead on this one? Okay, um, so Into the Woods is your intersection of a lot of classic fairy tales. You have Cinderella, um, you have Jack and the Beanstalk. You have um, Little Red Riding Hood <laughs> and you have um, Rapunzel and the Witch. And then there's two new characters in the show. There's the baker and the baker's wife. And they are kind of the, the people who tie the show together. So they intersect and um, interrupt all of the stories and try to get their wish. And so the goal of the show in the first act is for the baker and the baker's wife to have a child. And to do that, they have to get an item from each of the stories uh, that the witch kind of places the curse upon them and they have to go do that. And they um, basically allow all of those stories to occur. Then the second act is just chaos after that. <laughs> <laughs> I love chaos. And Alex, you played Jack. What, yes. uh, what about that character maybe makes you kind of relate to that character? Sure. So. Um, Jack specifically has a maturity through the show. Um, he starts out very naive and doesn't really um, have a lot of awareness of his surroundings and um, kind of certain, certain evils of the world. And so um, over the first act, he kind of gets in a lot of trouble um, stealing from the giants up in the kingdom of the sky. <laughs> and then the second act, um, basically the giants come down from the beanstalk and um, you know they cause chaos through all of the land and Jack has to accept responsibility and see the consequences of his actions and um, he becomes better for it. So I think that I, that ties to me I feel because I'm maturing right now especially in a time of absolute chaos. So I've been learning to adapt and I think Jack um, has a lot of adaptability. And Lillian you played the witch. What a fun character. Why don't you tell me, uh, same question, you know, do you relate to her or maybe she's, you know, maybe your inner self that's coming out that you don't usually see? <laughs> well, I, I mean, no spoilers. Um, I technically play two separate characters because oh. the witch goes through some funky transformation um, right at the end of act one. And it's really fun to not play when I come out first, I'm like, eh this is my character the whole time so it's really nice to not do that for the entire two and a half hour show uh, <laughs> but um I definitely do relate to her because she is a mediator and she's not very opinionated um especially when in act two people are trying to put blame for everything that's happening on each other and they go through this whole song it's a great song it's called your fault um they try to put blame on each other and the witch just stands there. She doesn't want to take any part in this because she doesn't really care uh, about the blame. And um, she's she's a mediator and she's not very opinionated. And I, I, I feel that because, I mean, I do have opinions on certain things, um, but like in times of like drama or something in between people, I never really take a part in it. And I'm always, you know, nice and friends with everybody and I don't let this drama like get into my head and change my opinion of a person or anything so I tend to be a mediator too as well in my life so I feel like that is the most relatable part of the character for me. And Mr. Topping this production has been in the works for a year and then 2020 we got the pandemic things changed drastically how do you transition from hey this is what we're going to do to a year later this is what we're doing. <laughs> right. So I think the, the biggest thing here is, and kind of what Alex was explaining, is that if there had to be a show for 2020 into 2021, Into the Woods is the show. It has this theme of we're all going to get our wish, right? And then we get 
the thing that we thought we had. And then act two is us realizing that life is messy and different and has different plans for you. Uh, and the show, the show ends with this song, No One Is Alone, right? And I think in 2020, isn't that the perfect message? So I think it's been a lot of creativity from staff members to students coming together to say, we're, we're in this together and we have this beautiful piece of art to, to work together through. It's been, it's been both tough and beautiful and such a representation of 2020 into 2021. And these students have been incredible. They've been so much of a motivating factor for all of the staff here to work with them. And it's just a joy to see us go through this and to be started again. We feel very, very grateful for our school district and for everyone kind of supporting us in this and being at this point where we're, we're looking forward to it and, and moving forward with things is really, really exciting. There's been many mitigations and, and things to figure out. And as you would imagine, all the, the, the masks and the social distancing and all that is, is crazy. But as you can see, the students have pulled through and persevered. And that's really the exciting part of all of it. I have to say, I'm excited to get your guys' message out because I think sometimes you guys get overlooked. You know, people are talking about, oh, this sport was canceled or this sport, they have to wear masks while they play. And no one's really thinking about music and the arts and the theater. And you guys have gone through the same thing. You had productions pulled. You haven't been able to do what you're passionate about. Um, and if people really think about it, you couldn't binge watch Netflix at home if you didn't have music, arts, and theater. So we need you. <laughs> so what is it like to know that, you know, you are very, valuable and you've come through this and now you can finally perform maybe not for a full audience but at least for some people any of you I think it's it's really nice to know that just because I mean it's something that I enjoy like I've always you know lived on the stage um but it's nice to know that like people care about us um and you know uh people always tell me like people come to see our show all the time because they love seeing our shows and I, that really means something to me because I love being a part of it so I love making other people's day by bringing the show to them and I know a lot of people can't come and that's really like devastating for us and I'm sure for the people who really wanted to see it but I'm really glad that we're able to get it out there um, and we're not not doing anything this year. We're really lucky that we get to do something. So I'm incredibly grateful for this opportunity. And I'm really glad that people care. Alex, how are you feeling coming through this? Yeah, sure. Um, I can I can completely relate. I binge watch Netflix, all that stuff. And <laughs> the arts are, are very uh, important to my day too. And so um, a lot of people in the community that I talk to, they're constantly asking me about the musical and they know Cedar Cliff uh, puts on a great show every year and they've been looking forward to it. Um, and even though a lot of them won't be able to come to the show, I think there is, um, every time I tell them that, they always say, it's so good to hear that you guys are still able to do it and that the tradition lives on and that we get to continue our show. And you know, the, the stage doesn't remain empty for another year um, and we get to, to bring our cast back together, which is a bunch of people with a lot of energy and a lot of talent and a lot of care for others and um, put on a show that kind of uplifts ourselves and the community and makes us feel like a team. Mr. Topping, let me ask you, can you just give us the details of when the show is um, and if people can come where they get tickets? Yeah, so for this year, the show is March 18th to the 21st. Um, and the only way to get tickets, it feels really, really exclusive, but it's what we're living right now, is you have to know one of these awesome young people. So they've each been assigned some tickets that they can use as reservations. Um, and we're, we're leaving it up to them. We want their closest relatives and people who are closest to them to come and see the show. Um, so be in touch with them if you're one of the closest people with our cast members and uh, we're just so excited. I think that there's that kind of that, that idea is as we move forward, that this piece of art that we have also comes with all that camaraderie and teamwork that these students get to be a part of. And it's just, yeah, you know, it as someone in the arts, there's something magic about working together towards something that then gets presented for other people. And the piece that's been maybe a tough thing to figure out during the pandemic is what is that now presented piece? And we've all worked really hard to get to this point and we're excited about it. And I also love that you guys are selling cardboard cutouts and they get to attend this. So tell us about that. So people who want to support it, there's a way to do that. 
I, I can kind of take this one since this is kind of the, so they're called fourth wall fans. And if you're someone who knows the theater, you call that invisible wall between the actors and the audience, the fourth wall. So we came up with this kind of fun title for them is that our fans sit on the other side of the fourth wall and they're watching the scenes unfold inside that three walled room. Uh, and people can purchase fourth wall fans and there are these awesome cardboard cutouts that are gonna sit in our auditorium and cheer these incredible students on. Uh, they're $20, you can um, have access to the form on our Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, the whole nine yards, or just get in touch with me at the school and we'll get you, and you get to keep them at the end. A lot of teachers and people are buying them of their pets or um, fun things that they're gonna keep them after the fact and use them for all different kinds of things. You don't have to tell me about it. I got one of my son who's a student there and he's gonna be mortified. So I'm not gonna say his name for those who don't know who he is, but I got one of him because afterwards I wanna bring it home because he's at that age. He doesn't wanna spend any time with me. So now I'll have a flat, well, his name is Jackson, flat Jackson in the car with me at the store and a flat Jackson that can go with me to the movies. So well, I, I love that. I had never made that, con I saw the cutout yesterday of him and I, I didn't make that connection until this very moment. So our that's my flat Jackson. He's gonna go with me everywhere. <laughs> our, our resident tuba player. So. That's right, that's right. Now you're giving it away. Everyone's gonna know who he is now. <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> that's all right, I don't care. He cares, I don't care. Um, one other cool thing you guys are doing, there's a book that kids, staff and the community have been putting things into um, that I think you guys are a part of about what the pandemic has taught them, how the world may look different after the pandemic and the effect maybe it may have on the future. And I understand it can be somewhat emotional to read. Can you guys talk, touch on that at all? Do, I, do either of you guys feel comfortable talking about the, the fourth book project? Sure, I can. Um, so the fourth book project. So on our stage, the way we have it set up is we have a book for each of the main stories that is told throughout um, the show. So we have like a book for Jack and the Beanstalk, a book for The Baker and the Baker's Wife and a book for Cinderella. And um, we decided this year that we wanted to tell the story of um, seniors and community members and people who went to the school um, and also the previous seniors who were in the show last year, um, tell their story of how the past year has gone for them and put it in a book so we can save their memory and people can kind of read through and and um, see what everyone's real story was outside of, you know, the show's characters and all of that. So um, for like me, for example, I just wrote about like my experience throughout the quarantine, some personal things that happened, all of that, and um, hoping that my, my story inspires others when they read it. And I think that's what everyone else is doing too. That's a really cool idea. You kind of have to imagine, so if you're thinking of the books, since many of you have, we live it, but you may not have, they're, they're about six, between six and 10 feet tall. They, they're different sizes for the books. Um, and they open, at the beginning of the story, they're closed and they roll out. And then they, in the opening prologue, they swing open and the story just kind of unfolds in live time. Um, and there's three of them. And so last year, our theme word was story. Uh, and this year, our theme word is journey. And you think about story, it's the, it's the things that have happened in the past. It's the telling of this. That's where we were last year was the telling of this beautiful story and piece of art. This year, we're on a journey. We've gone a year with this show. Um, and this fourth book is a representation of that journey. Um, and it's going to include all the people. Um, as you can imagine, there's been people who couldn't continue with us this year um, due to the many, many different things that have happened. But their story from last year is a part of our journey and we wanted to honor that and include that um, and it's going to be a part of the presentation so at the it's a physical medium but we're going to take this you can access you'll be able to see it on Facebook and all those um, social media sites we're going to take beautiful pictures of the images and things like that and get them out there but also the people who come to the show or the people who are at the school can come to see the, the book in a socially distanced fashion to, to see and read our stories as a representation of um, this last year in the show. I love that because, you know, in, in years to come, it's going to be cool to look on back and back on that and just kind of get a sense of what everyone was feeling because as time goes on, you kind of forget what you're feeling in the moment. So that's really cool. I love that. Yeah. Let me give you each one last chance to, to say anything else you want to say about the production or about, you know, coming through the pandemic. And Alex, since you started things off, we'll start with you again. Sure. Um, well, I would like to bring the message out to everyone on the radio that everyone at Cedar Cliff is high energy. We're very excited and we're a great cast. We love each other. 
Um, this show is all about working together to make everyone shine as um, part of a, of a unit, not about making soloists shine or making one person look really good. We really want everyone to have an equal role and to feel like they have a purpose. And um, I would say like a life lesson I've learned through these shows is that like no matter what role you are, you're important. You're always going to have um, a crucial, a key factor in everything you do. And you just have to find that part of yourself and bring it to the light and use it. Um, and yeah. <laughs> Lillian, how about you? Alex said everything. Um, <laughs> Alex! <laughs> <laughs> we're, yeah, we're definitely part of a community and we're all going through this together. So we all know what it's like and we're all pushing through it. And I hope we all have the motivation. I'm, I personally am very excited to see this show come together since we didn't get to put it together last year. So like now we got like a two year wait. So <laughs> I'm really excited. Um, and I think we all will have gone through a major achievement when we finish this and we're all a sense of community we strive to be and we are. I love that. Mr. Topping? So I think my, my closing remarks would be this is if you know one of these um, awesome students or staff members who've been involved with this show, as we go into the last two and a half weeks that we have before this show goes up is just encourage them. They're doing incredible work. They're, they're, they're really, really, and I know that they're going to be excited um, as it comes together. And, and it is, it's already together doing such great work. And I'm um, kind of closing with the idea of that in our program here, the things that these students are saying are so um, at the center of what we do. Every student is important um, from the show. No one is alone, right? These are, our, these are our themes for this year. We're on a journey and we're doing it not alone, but together. Uh, and I think that that's the most beautiful thing. That's I can always encourage people to support the arts in our school because we give students these opportunities and they're not just one facet. It's not you just learn to come and sing, you just come learn to act, you come learn to dance, but you also learn teamwork and camaraderie and, uh, and all the, the feelings of that. And there's nothing quite like it. It's such a comprehensive experience. And it's not just the students on stage. We have wonderful students working behind the stage and those who get to see this show are in for a treat. I can't wait for you to see it, I'm so excited. And if people want to purchase those cardboard cutouts um, or um, also look at that book afterwards, where do they find you on social media? How do they search for you? Yeah, they should look up Cedar Cliff Productions. That's our, that's kind of our theater name. You'll be able to find us. Don't worry. We're, we're in all of those places. So Cedar Cliff Productions on, and yeah, it'll, it'll come right up with our um, stuff there. So. Perfect. Well, thank you all so much for joining us. Alexander McQuaid, Lillian Campbell, and Mr. Matt Topping talking to us about Into the Woods. It's the Cedar Cliff musical for this year. And I'm very excited. I'm sorry I won't be able to see it, but you guys always put on a fabulous program. I love all your productions that I've been to in the past. So um, break a leg and don't forget about us when you're all big and famous. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you.